Hello friends, this video on kinetic theory part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 13 before going ahead with part 14. So we will look at certain assumptions which we follow in order to calculate the pressure of an ideal gas. The first assumption is the container containing the gas is a cube. We assume that the gas is present inside a container whose shape is in the form of a cube. The second assumption is all collisions are neglected. You might find it surprising that just before some time I told you that inside a gas the molecules are continuously moving and also colliding with each other. So how is it that we are neglecting all the collisions? As of now, you just assume that this assumption is true and go ahead. After we finish the derivation of pressure of an ideal gas, I will also justify these assumptions. <coughs> so, as I told you, we are considering a cube shaped container which is containing an ideal gas. Now, this ideal gas will consist of several molecules. Just to make you understand what we are trying to derive, let us consider one particular molecule. Here you can see that only one molecule has been displayed. Let us suppose that this molecule moves in this way, hits the wall of the container and then bounces back. So what happened here? Initially, this molecule came like this. It hit the wall of the container and then bounced back like this. That means when the molecule, molecule was coming, the velocity of the molecule can be represented as Vx, Vy, Vz. Assuming that this is x-axis, this is my y-axis and this is the z-axis. So we assumed these are the three coordinate axes. So we can say that the molecule while hitting the wall, its velocity can be represented as Vx, Vy, Vz. Now when it bounces back, so what is the velocity that time? Let us say it is minus Vx because the direction along x axis will change. However, along y and z axis, it will still remain the same. So while coming back, the velocity will be minus Vx, Vy, Vz. So with this, what would be the change in momentum? Let us find out the change in momentum. So change in momentum will be final momentum minus initial momentum. So final momentum after collision. So what is the momentum after collision? That will be minus mvx. And minus, what was the initial momentum? It was mvx. So the change in momentum is minus 2mvx. This is the change in momentum. So whatever is the change in momentum, that is the momentum that is imparted to the wall during collision. Correct? That means, let us suppose initially the molecule had momentum P1. After hitting the wall, it has momentum P2. That means how much momentum did the molecule give to the wall? It gave P2 minus P1, right? Or P1 minus P2. So that means whatever is the change in momentum, that is the momentum which is given by the molecule to the wall. Correct? So that means the momentum imparted to the wall in collision will be equal to 2m vx. So this will be because this negative sign is nothing but it just it just denotes the direction. So the momentum imparted to the wall is 2m vx. Now this is the momentum imparted to the wall by one molecule. That is an important point to be noted. But the gas consists of several molecules. So what will be the total momentum imparted to the wall? 
In order to calculate that, let us see how many molecules will hit the wall. So, the first we have to calculate how many molecules can hit the wall. Let us suppose that the area of the wall is equal to A. Therefore, in time delta T, all molecules within a distance of A, V into delta T, in, in fact Vx into delta T can hit the wall. What does this mean? That means any molecule which lies within this volume. How come this is the volume? This is the area of the wall and this is the distance travelled by the molecule that is velocity into time. So in time t, all molecules which lies within this volume can hit the wall because this is the volume in the surrounding area of the wall. So all these molecules can hit the wall but on an average half of these are moving towards and half of them are moving away from the wall. As you can see from this figure that the molecule will first come like this then it will go like this. So we say that let us suppose within this volume all the molecules will hit the wall but half of them will be moving towards the wall whereas some of them will be moving away from the wall. That means <coughs> Only half of these many molecules will hit the wall. So let us make it half. So half of A into Vx delta T because only half of them hit the wall. So this has been halved. So we can say therefore number of molecules that hit the wall will be equal to number of molecules per unit volume into this volume which we calculated above that is half into A V X into delta T. So what is this number of molecules per unit volume? This is nothing but small n that is number density. So we can say half N A V X into delta T. So this is the total momentum. So these are the total number of molecules that will hit the wall. Therefore total momentum imparted. Therefore total momentum imparted to the wall will be equal to the momentum imparted by one molecule that is this one into the number of molecules that will hit the wall. That means half into N A V X delta T into 2 M V X. So this 2 and 2 will get cancelled. So this comes out to be A N V X square into delta T into M. So this is the total momentum that is imparted to the wall. Now till now we found what did we find? We found the total momentum that will be imparted to the wall because of the molecules hitting the wall. So what would be the force exerted on the wall? When a momentum is imparted on the wall there will be a force that will be imparted because force is nothing but rate of change of momentum. And change of momentum we already calculated, right, in the previous step. So the rate of change of momentum would be A N M V X square. The delta T term will vanish. Therefore, and whenever there is a force, there is a pressure. So the pressure on the wall will be equal to force per unit area. That is equal to N M Vx square. So this is the pressure exerted on the wall and that is what we wanted to calculate here. That is we wanted to calculate the pressure of an ideal gas. So this is the pressure that is Nm Vx square. So this is the pressure that is exerted on the wall. Now here what we have assumed is 
Vx is the velocity with which the molecule moves. But a point to be noted here is that all the molecules inside the gas will not have the same value of Vx. They all will have different velocities. So this expression whatever we have found this is true for a group of molecules with velocity Vx. So this is true for a group of molecules moving with velocity Vx. So therefore the total pressure which is exerted due to many such groups or due to all such groups inside the sample of the gas will be equal to total pressure P. Let us name this P as P1. So total pressure P due to all groups due to all such groups will be equal to Nm Vx square bar. What is this Vx square bar? This is basically average of Vx square. So that we can take into consideration the contribution from all such groups. Now since we know that gas is isotropic, that is in gas, the molecules move randomly. There is no specific direction of velocity. So the velocity of all the molecules can be in any direction. Therefore, we can say Vx square will be equal to Vy square will be equal to Vz square will be equal to V square. That is the average value of Vx, Vy, Vz square because x, y, z direction doesn't really matter in this case because the molecules are free to move about in any direction. So we can say that Vx square is equal to 1 by 3 V square. Now putting this value we can write pressure is equal to 1 by 3 m into n into v square bar. So this is the expression for pressure of an ideal gas on the basis of kinetic theory. What is v square? This is nothing but average of squared speed. This is average of squared speed or velocity. So I hope it is clear to you. I can understand that since the derivation is quite long, it might be confusing. But please have a quick review on whatever I explained you. First I considered only one molecule. I said that that molecule is moving with velocity Vx. It hits the wall and bounces back with velocity minus Vx. So it imparts some momentum to the wall. So first I calculated the total momentum that is imparted to the wall by one molecule. Right? Then I calculated total how many molecules will hit the wall. And I found that the total number of molecules that will hit the wall is this much. So I calculated the total momentum imparted to the wall. On the basis of the total momentum, I calculated the force imparted on the wall. From there, I found, found out the pressure on the wall. But this pressure was with the assumption that the, all the molecules have velocity Vx, which will not be true in real scenario because all molecules will move with different velocities. So again, I thought, okay, I assume that in that sample of gas, it is true for that group in which all molecules move with velocity Vx. So there will be many such groups moving with different velocities. So I said the total pressure due to all such groups would be Vx square bar. Where this is the average of the squared velocity. This again when expressed in terms of V square is found to be P is equal to 1 by 3 mn V square which is the equation for pressure of an ideal gas on the basis of kinetic theory. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.